Howdy partner. So you want to learn how to upgrade the center console on 2019 and 2020 Chevy Silverado Custom Edition? You're in luck. We're going to add some storage today. Come on in. This is the infamous no storage center console that's on the 2019 and 2020 Silverado 1500 Custom Editions. This is a custom trail boss or any of the work trucks. Right here where there should be a handle, they did not. So there's absolutely no storage in this vehicle. There is no storage here. There's the opening here with no lid. There is no sunglass. So pretty much you run out of all storage. Um, the one we're gonna be replacing it with has an opening, which is uh, kind of a common sense thing, but I guess it's Chevy's way of getting you to pay an extra $10,000 to get the LT edition. Uh, makes a nice bench seat. I wanted the bench seat, um, and now we're going to fix the storage problem. So this is the old one, and uh, we'll be taking it out now. The first thing you want to do is to disconnect the negative battery terminal. The uh, seats are hooked up to an airbag, so it's probably safest just to do this whenever you might be moving the seats. Um, so we're going to have to unbolt them later on, and uh, I'd hate to have an airbag go off. So just take off this one bolt up top. It's a uh, 10 millimeter. Let's loosen that, take off the negative and put it somewhere where it's not going to make contact with anything to ground out. And that way we'll be real safe on the airbags. Probably safe anyways, but better to uh, do it this way. So when we start to undo the upper portion of the center console, we're going to actually have to unbolt the driver's seat. Um, that's going to be four T50 star bolts there. Two in the front and two in the back. And then, excuse me for just a minute. We're also gonna have to end up taking out this seat belt bolt back here, if you can see it, uh, which requires us to take on our T50 and then move the seat forward a little bit so that we can access that seat belt bolt for the center console. So before we do that, um, since the seat's gonna be moving even a little bit, we're gonna have to create a little play. So we gotta pop this piece of trim off. It kind of comes up and then out. I already got it out. And then when you're under here, you have an airbag module, I believe is what it is. Um, you can disconnect it, or I found it's in a, it's just, if you kind of slide it, you can get it off of its housing and that creates some play. So we're gonna do that because when we take the seat up, we're gonna move it forward just about an inch, and that way we won't bind on anything. And then we'll just take this right here and slide it back into that track. We just need a little bit of room. Okay. So this piece of trim has to come off on both sides. What it is, is you wanna get your fingers in and start here at the top. We don't wanna break the clips. There's three clips, so we wanna get in there, but it's pretty hard tight. So get your fingers in there as much as you can and pull it straight towards you and it should start to pop. It's actually gonna make two pieces down here, kind of work around it. And just keep pulling it straight towards you with even pressure. And when you get it off, there you go. So the next thing we're gonna do is start working on these two screws and bolts. And then there's going to be a couple others that we'll get to in just a second. But we'll start working on these in a minute. So the two star bits you need to remove, uh, bolts from your right here, a little screw at the bottom that retains it. So you just take those out. And then this piece comes right off. When you take off these seats, you're gonna find that the two bolts close to the center console are just bolted right through, and they come up easily. But the two closest to the door actually have a washer on the bottom, and it's very hard to get to and grip. So I was a little concerned about dropping that washer. But what I learned is once you get it off, the washer actually stays via magnet or a clip or something. Um, so when you're doing that, just be gentle, but it should stay there, and that way you don't drop it into this metal cavity. With the seat slid forward, the final 
part to remove is this bolt down here, which is an 18 millimeter. Let's take off the seat belt retention. That should free up your seat belt. And then, again, you've got to take this piece off, which I've already taken, to expose the, uh, the side. What you want to do is, this was through here, so it's a latch. Keep the latch release there, but take it off. And then there's two bolts to hold this backrest in. One here, and then there's one right here. So we just gotta get in there and take those two off so it'll come off. I know I was talking about removing the two bolts up here, which I did, they were 15 millimeter. But I found that my new replacement seat actually came with this whole assembly down to here for the backrest all the way into here, which is held in by two more uh, star bolts. So what I did is I popped off this piece of, um, of uh, molding there trim after I took out the seat belt bolt, which was down there. And then now I'm just taking out these two star bolts. So I'll end up removing this entire section because the new seat came with this section. Depending on which seat you end up getting for the back, it may only have the top part or it may actually have this mechanism. So you just have to look at that and figure out if you just do these two bolts or if you need to do these other two down here. Here we have the one that we removed, which is above, and then the new one. They look identical, except no handle on this one, and that one does have a handle, so it opens up. The only thing you have to do at this point is you need to take this clip in here, and there's another clip in here. You have to move those to the new one because it didn't come with those clips. That's what retains the plastic. That's pretty easy. You just take a pair of needle nose pliers and just squeeze in the middle. And then you can pull them right out. And then you can put it right into there and reuse them. So we'll get those done and then start reinstalling. This is what it'll look like when it's all gone. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put it back. Now you can put it back with it up uh, standing vertically or horizontally. We're gonna try to reassemble it horizontally because that'll be a little easier. Now we're bolted back up. I should note these are T55 bolts and they're in there really tight. So I tried to use a T50, wouldn't open them, stripped out a little bit and end up having to buy a new 255. So those are tough. And then uh, make sure you don't have the seat belt twisted when you set it back in so that it's uh, set in properly. Okay, time to uh, put all the trim on and bolt up the other side. Reassembly of the passenger side is very much like the driver's side. You wanna make sure that you get this spring in the right position and torque it down as well as the retaining screw. And then, these three mold molding clips, they were actually on the old one. So I went in and removed them like I did on the first part and put those three back so the plastic will snap right back in. A little trick I just figured out. For me, it's a trick. Maybe it's not a trick for a pro. But you have the openings where the clips were. Um, I went ahead and after having trouble getting it back snapped in, I took the clip off and I just basically pushed it down as far as I could on a plastic holder. And then when you push it up there, it'll get mounted where it's supposed to be. It makes it much easier. So that's how I recommend to do it. Now we're all reattached uh, with the new one. Neat feature I wasn't aware of. This is the part that opens. It won't open when it's in the upright position, which is nice because my kids would love opening it up and dumping it everywhere. So now we just gotta put the seat, the driver's seat back, and then we'll look at the end finished product. We've reattached all four of the bolts for the seat. Make sure when you do that, these two, uh, if the seat reclines and goes back and forth, um, the uh, back and forth motion, these are independent on each side. So you wanna make sure that it's even and loosen it and then pull out whichever side if they're not. Then we have to reattach the airbag sensors and uh, put back on a trim. And we'll take a look at the finished product. So that's it. We're all put back together. Let's take a look. It looks like the same console, but whoa, storage. This here is a game changer.
This makes me so happy. Storage. All right, anyone who's out there with this kind of truck understands why I'm so excited. It's very secure, sits there very hard. Now I should have mentioned is you can actually buy this entire assembly. It costs a lot more, but you'll get another storage compartment underneath here if you need uh, extra storage. I was good with just the top half, which is what we showed you today. So now we've got an upgraded truck that is actually reasonable in terms of having a glove box. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. I have a couple more videos coming with the 2020 Chevy Trail Boss. Going to be showing you how much room there is in the back seats for some child seats. I got a lot of kids. Um, or, uh, you know, uh, a few accessories you can do. So thanks for tuning in. Take care.